let's talk about the history of shoes. It starts right here with riding animals and stirrups. You have a heel here to capture that, and we've got something to jab the animal with to en encourage it to run. And so this is the history of where a lot of shoes came from. So as they started developing, and then through the 18 and 1900s, we had dress shoes. Same stuff, no stirrup, but we've got a raised heel. I didn't, I could have got ones that have a super pointy heel, but still, even this one, we have the same thing. And now we start having back problems, knee problems, all this sort of stuff. And none of these are designed really for movement. But then in the 60s, we started designing shoes for movement. Running shoes, the great running craze hit. We've got a swoosh here, and there's a reason behind this. Because Nike introduced running shoes, but continued this raised heel concept and also started doing a raised toe. Raised toe? Why did they do that? I'll tell you why. They started having people have injuries. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna fix this from happening? And they went to someone, a podiatrist, and he said, well, everybody's been walking around with those heels and they've got a shortened gastroc, doesn't function as well, and it needs to be stretched out and strengthened. So they decided to make a raised heel instead to accommodate it because that's what people had. The person that suggested it, says that's probably one of the biggest regrets of their life. Now, why the raised toe? Well, with the raised heel, it actually opens you to have an overstride with your gait for walking and running, which, by the way, check out our content around an open scissor and the effects all through the body, particularly on back issues. An arch support built in, orthotics, the entire industry. We have basically all these band-aids starting to go on there because we're setting the foot up not to function correctly, to have issues through the whole body. So do me a favor, 